What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we need to take a look at the top 10 Brobnar cards, which are, well, which came around in Worlds Collide. Now, we have actually done the top 10 cards from Worlds Collide from every single other house other than Brobnar. So we probably, like, if we don't want to be a little bit rude, should probably have a look at Brobnar now. We will be doing an overall top 10 cards from Worlds Collide generally in a few days' time. But we'll go to Brobnar now. No, no honourable mentions. But let's just get straight in at number 10 with Kalox Stonefather. Now, this is the leader of the Brobnar house. There is a leader in every house in Worlds Collide. Six power, zero armor is fine, but slightly uninspiring. If it is in the center of your battle line, all the leaders have a skill which activates in the center of your battle line. Each friendly creature gains skirmish. That is to say that each friendly creature can attack while taking no damage in return. The deal with skirmish is you start the fight, and then as long as you start it, no damage is done to you. You can... Fight and be all right. And Brobnar is a fighty house, right? Brobnar is a house that really wants to be fighting and doing a lot of good stuff. They're not about the amber rushing or any of that rubbish. So, yeah. Okay. This seems like the kind of good thing for them. I don't think it's as good as some of the other leaders, but it's fairly fun. I mean, think of a card like Ragnarok. It's an alpha card, and for the remainder of the turn, creatures cannot reap, and you gain one amber whenever a friendly creature fights. But then at the end of your turn, you destroy each creature, so... Yeah, at least you destroy all your opponents as well. Maybe Ganger Chieftain would be a better example here. When you play it, you may ready and fight with a neighboring creature. Cool. In at number 9, Gron Nine Toes and Mega Gron Nine Toes. The difference between them is that they're identical, but Mega Gron Nine Toes has plus 2 power. If you get Mega Gron Nine Toes, you will also get Gron's Brew, an action card that gives you an armor bonus and allows you to give 2 plus 1 power counters to one of your creatures. Maybe Gron Nine Toes. Gron Nine Toes gets plus 4 power while it is damaged but only gets the plus 4 power if it survives. So if your opponent does 7 damage, you don't go up to 9 power and survive. 7 damage is done, you are destroyed before you get the extra power. It's a big fighty creature. It really is as simple as that. It is a big fighty creature that does a lot of damage. It can sit there reaping and it's hard to take off the board, but really, I mean, especially Mega Gron Nine Toes are sitting there as an 11 power creature, you're using it to take out what your opponent has got on their board. In at number eight, Fire Breath. It is an upgrade that gives you an amber bonus. And the creature to which it is attached gets plus three power and gains before fight, deal two damage to each neighbor of the creature this creature fights. I mean, imagine this on a Mega Gron Nine Toes, right? You're now sitting there at a 14 power creature, and you're dealing two damage to each neighbor of the creature you fight. I mean, if you get this right, if you manage to time this correctly, you can take out something like an Ember Imp or a Restring Guntus just using this residual damage without actually having to attack them. So you can go ahead and take out something far more powerful, but then just knock out a couple creatures on the side while you're there. It really can be an exceptionally useful little skill. In at number four, Mega Groke. Now, this is a weird one to me, because Groke's Brew and Mega Groke are new in Worlds Collide, but Groke was in Age of Ascension. Obviously, also in here, that's you, you kind of need that and the Brew to get Mega Groke. It's, it's fine. I like it, but I am a little bit... I'm a little bit worried that I'm cheating a little bit bringing it in. But it is a new creature, kind of. I mean, it's just Groke with two more power. Seven power creature, when you fight, your opponent loses an amber. The thing is, in order to get a fight skill working, you've got to survive the fight. So having that two extra power, at least, because obviously you can use Groke's Brew to give yourself more power, could be the difference between two fights and three fights. Which means your opponent is losing three amber 
rather than two amber. You see where we're going with this? It's a very, very fun card. It fights as so many of the Brobnar creatures do. And then your opponent loses amber. And if you're a bit more powerful, that makes it a bit more good. In at number six, Shattered Throne. It is an artifact that gives you an amber bonus. And after a creature is used to fight, it captures one amber. Now, when a creature is destroyed, the amber goes to the other player. So you capture amber and then your opponent gets it back. But the thing is, you capture it now and they get it back later if they're able to take the creature down. At the very least, this should take away enough amber from your opponent for one turn that they're unable to forge a card. Except, because this is an artifact, you can do this every turn. And worth pointing out, it is a permanent skill, not an action. Which means you can play it down and it immediately works. You can play it now and then start fighting and capturing. Now it is after a creature is used to fight, it captures one amber. So it does work for your opponent as well. But then again, you're Brobnar. You're probably going to be fighting more than they are. Like we keep saying, Brobnar is a fighty house. What we're really looking for here is ways to make all of our fighting worth it. And this will absolutely do that. In at number five, Guji Dinosaur Hunter. This was one of those cards where the artwork was shown off in advance. And I suggested this would probably be something to do with doing extra damage to the Saurian Republic. And it is. It is a four power zero armor creature with elusive and it has an action deal two damage to a creature. But instead you could deal six damage if it is a dinosaur creature or a creature that has any amber on it. Well dinosaur creature is the Saurian Republic, the vast majority of not all of them, but the vast majority of them are dinosaurs. And the Saurian Republic love exalting, which is putting amber on from the common pool. Although this will help you to get any creature that's captured amber. So yeah. I mean, if your opponent is capturing amber, this is phenomenal. If your opponent is the Saurian Republic trying to exalt, this is wonderful. Obviously, the best result here is where you can destroy a creature with amber on, because then you get the amber. But taking out little dinos could be fun as well. It's kind of matchup dependent, but it's still very, very fun. In at number four, the floor is lava. It is an artifact with an amber bonus, and at the start of your turn, you deal one damage to a friendly creature and one damage to an enemy creature. Now, this hurts yourself and your opponent, but the key point is you decide which of your creatures takes the damage. And you decide which of your opponent's creatures takes the damage. Which means that you can just go, you know what? I can hurt you way, way more than you can hurt me. You can take out their one power Restring Guntus or their one power Urchin. While dropping one random damage on one of your characters. Like, for instance, Gron Ninetales. And obviously there's a great, great combo here. You drop exactly one damage on. Enough to activate the extra power. But not enough to really make you close to being KO'd. Cool. In at number three, Shorty and Mega Shorty. Again, they're the same creature. Just one's got two extra power. Shorty has four power. Mega Shorty has six power. And they both have Assault 4. That is to say, before you attack, you deal 4 damage to the attacked enemy. That's really good. It means that if you fight a 4 power creature, they go down. And you don't even take any damage back because the fight never happened. Because the Assault took them out before the fight. Now, when you reap, you enrage Shorty. And this could be good or bad. Enraging basically means... You put a rage counter on a creature, and then the next time it is used, it must fight if it's able to do so, and then you remove the rage counter. Cool. Incidentally, if there are no creatures to fight, you cannot fight, so you are allowed to reap, but you then do not remove the rage counter because you haven't fought. It's fine. I like it. The problem is it limits your options. It's kind of the downside, right? Powerful creature, huge damage before you fight. If you're only using it to fight, you're fine. 
But if you want to reap two turns in a row, you're not going to be able to, and that could end up being a bit of a problem. In at number two, Barn Raising. It's an action card, and for the remainder of the turn, your opponent loses one amber each time a friendly creature fights. This is great amber control. Now, it's very dependent on your deck. You've got to have a lot of creatures in your deck, or at least you've got to have a bunch of creatures ready to fight during your turn. But if you've got five creatures ready, you fight with all five of them, and then your opponent loses five amber. And, of course, if you've got Kalok Stonefather in the centre of your battle line, then all your creatures have skirmish. So you're using barn raising to get rid of all your opponent's amber, and you're not even taking any damage back. The reason this card is so good is because it can drop a lot of your opponent's amber back into the common pool very, very quickly. It can be the thing that stops them forging a key, and that can be absolutely huge. But in at number one, and it wasn't even close, Berserker Slam. Shout out as always to the lovely people on the Facebook group who joined in my poll to help decide the best cards. This was number one, got like 10 times or like 7 or 8 times the amount of votes the number two got. Wasn't even close. It is an action card, gives you an amber bonus, and when you play it, you deal 4 damage to a flank creature. If it destroys that creature, its controller loses 1 amber. So you can use this to get rid of one of your own creatures. You can use this to destroy your own Brend the Fanatic, which has got 3 power, so will be destroyed. And when it's destroyed, you steal 3 amber... But you also lose an amber. Might not be the worst thing ever, of course, because you still, your opponent's basically lost three amber. You've lost one, but gained three. So you've essentially gained two amber. They've lost three. It still works out very much in your favor. But most of the time, you're going to use this to take out one of your opponent's flank creatures. Because not that, I mean, the average creature, right? I haven't run the numbers, but there seems to be a lot more four or lower than there are four or higher. Certainly in terms of the ones we actually see being played. I've not done the maths on that, I could be wrong. But the point is, you find a 4 power creature or less on your opponent's flank. You play this, you gain an amber, destroy one of their creatures, and they lose an amber. That seems like a good list of things for you, very much not for your opponent. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. They're the top 10 Barovnar cards from Worlds Collide. I would very much like to know your opinion on all of these. What would your top 10 be? You know I want to see a full top 10. Tell me which of these cards you like. Tell me which cards you don't like. Tell me if there are any on this list that you think are awesome that I haven't written. Go nuts in the comment section, but please do remember the rule. Be nice, would you? And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy where we can talk about Keyforge and a whole bunch of other games. And do please consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would you? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays. <laughs>